Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Richard III and today we get to hear from Clarence again, the Duke of Clarence, who is also known as George. And because his name starts with a G, he's in the Tower of London right now because Richard planted the idea in Edward's head that somebody whose name starts with G is going to kill Edward. So Edward had Clarence slash George arrested and sent to the Tower, even though Richard is the Duke of Gloucester. Gloucester. So Richard is hoping that Edward will die of natural causes and then that Clarence will be killed while he's in prison. He's hoping that Edward will actually give the order to have Clarence killed while he's in prison because with the two of them out of the way then it's very easy for him to take the throne. He's actually supposed to be regent to Edward's son because Edward's son is a little bit too young to become king himself. So if he can get Edward and Clarence out of the way then he's pretty golden in terms of taking the throne himself. But he doesn't want to totally bank on that, so he has also hired a couple of murderers to go to the jail. And this is important because they come in later in the scene. So anyway, we start off the scene 1-4 with Clarence talking to the jailkeeper and recounting this horrible nightmare that he had wherein he and Richard were on a boat. Like he had managed to escape from prison and the two of them are on a boat and Richard's like, come out and walk along here. But then Richard starts to like, fall and he Clarence goes to help him and Clarence is the one that, that falls overboard and sinks into the ocean and as he's sinking he sees all this stuff down there and the jailkeeper's like you were still able to like notice some stuff you didn't you didn't just instantly die because you're drowning underwater and Clarence says no no my dream was lengthened after life oh then began the tempest to my soul I passed, methought, the melancholy flood with that sour ferryman which poets write of unto the kingdom of perpetual night. The first that there did greet my stranger soul was my great father-in-law, renowned Warwick, who spake aloud, What scourge for perjury can this dark monarchy afford false Clarence? And so he vanished. Then came wandering by a shadow like an angel with bright hair dabbled in blood and he shrieked out aloud clarence is come false fleeting perjured clarence that stabbed me in the field by tewkesbury seize on him furies take him unto the torment with that methought a legion of foul fiends environed me and howled in mine ears such hideous cries that with the very noise i trembling waked and for a season after could not believe but that i was in hell such terrible impression made my dream so basically in his dream what he's saying is that as he's as he's drowning he actually descends into hell and sees people who he has wronged in the past who call him out for his crimes for uh, for his sins in his living life basically you know they you killed me <laughs> it's a little bit it's a little bit like christmas carol except he doesn't get to the third one <laughs> necessarily he he first gets warwick his great father-in-law and then he gets um another guy who he killed in tewkesbury but then he gets like mobbed by a whole bunch of demons who are screaming in his ears and i guess that's the ghost of murder's future or something whatever but anyway, getting mobbed startles him awake, and for a little while he's not sure if that was actually a dream or or if he actually had been in hell. So he's he's still a little shaky, and he asks the, the jailkeeper to, you know, stay nearby while he falls asleep. And the jailkeeper is a nice guy and doesn't necessarily think that Clarence needs to be in prison, so he's like, yeah, sure, I'll stay with you for a bit. And then uh, Breakenberry comes in, I think that's his name, comes in to watch over for a little while but then the two murderers show up and they have this warrant that like allows them to be there and break and mary's like i want nothing to do with this um so the two murderers are like okay he's there but he's sleeping we don't want to kill him while he's sleeping because that really looks like murder we need to do something else they're like okay what if we just sort of like wake him up and then knock him out and then drown him in wine that's in the next room and they're like okay but then the second murderer is like um really do we do we really need to do this like he starts having second thoughts and starts to feel guilty about it and doesn't actually want to have to go through with murdering someone until the first murderer is like um remember we're getting bank for this and he's like okay yeah let's do it so they wake clarence up and um 
he, he becomes aware fairly quickly of the fact that they are there to kill him, and he starts trying to talk himself out of that situation as Richard warned the murderers he would. He's like, on whose orders do you do this? And they're like, on order of the king. And he's like, well, the king of kings, God, says the murderer is bad, so you're going to... You're gonna like flout his laws in the name of the laws of a man, and he's like, "Go, go get Richard. Richard, Richard loves me, and Richard will tell you that that I'm not supposed to die right now." And they're like, "Actually, Richard is the one that hired us to come and do this." Um, and eventually, Clarence does get killed. He gets stabbed specifically by the first murderer, who then takes him into the next room and drowns him in wine just to make sure that the stabbings. In, in case he stabbed him in the wrong place. He then takes him and drowns him in wine in the next room. And while he's doing that, and the second murderer has just a second on stage by himself, he's like, crap, I didn't want to be involved in that. And the first murderer comes back, he's like, well, you were a really big help. And the second murderer's like, you know what? I don't want my part of the reward. I don't want to have been part of any of this. And the first murderer's like, yeah, and, and we'll tell Gloucester what a great job you did, meaning Richard. We'll tell Richard what a great job you did. And that's the end of Act 1, Scene 4. So, one brother out of the way for Richard. Um, George, Duke of Clarence, has been stabbed and drowned in wine in the prison. And, yeah, now, now we gotta focus on what happens with the actual king. And we'll get more into that tomorrow. I'll see you then. Mwah.